Ding, 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 ding. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. We have a winner, winner, chicken dinner. We have a winner. I've done it. I found, I found it. What do I found? Well, you know, the mad day for me. So, I was content to end with ten movies. You know, finish up with Stepfather 3 and just end it. But I knew that the Stepfather 3 wasn't going to be, like, what you would say a great movie. So that's why I decided to extend it to try to find... I mean, I'm still doing one more for a 13 because, you know, horror movies on Lucky 13. But I'm trying to find a movie that I could say is a perfect score or close to it. And ladies and gentlemen, I found it. You know, I tried. I put in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 because there, there's a lot of, you know, fan love for that. It's a cult classic now. That was good. That will hunt. <laughs> Love's got a girlfriend. Love's got a girlfriend. But it was only a nine. Then I put in the Unborn and I was very disappointed. That one got a five. So that has to be something. And while looking up some stuff, like I look on the horror section, this movie wasn't in there. I had to, like, go through the the backlog of stuff. I'm pretty sure it would have been in Shout Factory or something, but I found the movie From Beyond, starring Jeffrey Combs, Cam Forey, Barbara, Fam Barbara Crampton. You know, he said a name. This movie is directed by Stuart Gordon, produced by Brian Yosna, Creature Effects by John Carl Beekler. May he rest in peace. Stuart Gordon, too. This movie is fantastic. And right now, I'm spoiling my rating. It's, it's going to the moon. To the moon! Perfect score of this movie. Yes, there's some problems. And I'll get into it, but they're minor problems, really. So the story is that uh, these two scientists are working on a machine called the Resonator. This one scientist... Dr. Pretorius, if that name sounds familiar to you, then you have seen Bride of Frankenstein. But Dr. Pretorius and his partner, Dr. Crawford Tillingast, yes, that is his name, who is played by Jeffrey Combs, they're working on this machine that's supposed to uh, stimulate the was it pineal gland that's in your forehead, I think. This thing. Am I going to turn one of those things? Uh supposed to stimulate that creating what they say is a third eye I guess and that does come in the I think later but they start seeing these weird eel things and if something eats off bites off uh, Pretorius's head so Crawford runs out and he is taken to a mental facility for all his ranties and ravings where he is uh, he is watched over by uh, one uh, character played by Stuart Gordon's wife, uh, who's also in Dolls. Another character played by Barbara Crampton, who is on one of the main characters. And she believes that, because they do an x ray or a CAT scan, whatever you call it, and she believes that possibly this machine could help. Cure schizophrenia in patients and explain why they have it. I don't know. But she decides that she wants him to go free and then go back to the house and look at the machine. <clears throat> because they, because you know, it's hard to trust someone. So they have a policeman, a detective named Bubba, played by Ken Forey. Sorry, it's. And, uh, so they go back to the house, and right away, like, I've watched a couple of these reviews, so, the sentence seems to be that, uh, people think that, like, well, like, I think one of the, I just watched a review where they're like, why did Bubba stop him from destroying the machine? And, like, the whole thing here is that, like, uh, Crawford disappears, and then when they go up to look at the machine, he comes up from behind them 
with an axe. He didn't. He wasn't stopping him from destroying the machine. He thought he was stopping him from hurting Barbara Crampton. And this machine, they turn it on, they see the eels, and then they see that Pretorius is there, and he's naked, he's hairy, and he turns into this creature. And then they turn it off. I think they actually turn it... I think this is the second time when he shows up, I think. I don't know. I don't remember. But they turn it off, and then this stimulates their... They make makes him horny, cause even even Bubba's like, I explained my heart on earlier, or whatever, and then they stop to make dinner or whatever. And, um, like the next morning, they wake up and she's making eggs, and like she cracks one regular and she just kind of, like one is regular, but they they did this on purpose. She has it go gooey and go inside the thing, and I'm like, okay, they did that on purpose so they can be gross, and. uh... So they all decide to take a nap, and so they're sleeping, and she gets horny or whatever and turned on, so she goes up to the machine because she needs to turn it back on, and Crawford, you know, senses this too, he goes up, he tells it turned off, she goes, I need to feel it, I need to take this, to, you know, that kind of thing, and, um, so he tries to... He decides he's got to turn off the machine, but doesn't turn off the machine. Like, he, he gets zapped a couple times or whatever, but he doesn't go for the switch. He decides to run all the way down to the basement to detach it from the thing down there. As he's going down to the basement, he's tackled by Bubba, who is in the bright-ass reddish orange orange Speedo that at one point you can see Bubba's package. Okay? It did. You could see it through the underpants in his speedo or whatever. And during this, you know, uh, this is when he shows up. You know, he's a creature, um, Pretorius. And of course, because it's Barbara Crampton in an 80s horror film, we see tits. And he like rips open her little nightgown thing and he's going like this. And I believe he sticks his finger down in a hoo hoo hoo. And then. Licks his finger, and he's like grabs her titty with his extended fingers. It's like, okay, tits, but that's gross, okay. And like, this is a really weird movie, but I enjoy every bit of it. So eventually, so uh, he tack so Bubba tackles Crawford because he thinks that Crawford is doing this. And he tells him he's got to go downstairs. So they can unplug the thing and there's a worm creature because apparently it's leaking down there somehow. And um Crawford gets his like head in the worm creature. But Bubba's able to pull the thing apart and then Barbara Crampton kinda just unplugs everything. Okay, well how's this movie gonna continue that way? Well you'll see plot convenience, but it, it doesn't matter. You can see that they say they do it for me on Stop it. Stop yawning. You weren't yawning before this. I hate that. I hate that. I'm not yawning at all. I start recording and then I keep yawning. So, anyway, uh, Crawford has scars on his chest and everything. No hair. And his head's weird, a little bumpy. And he's resting. So, Bubba says, We're getting that fuck out of here. So he goes to start the car, and she, so they, they found earlier that Pretorius was a kinky bastard. He, you know, S&M shit everywhere. She puts on this kind of S&M gimp outfit thing, because it's Barbara Crampton, she has to look sexy. And she's standing there, and she gets on top of Crawford, and you can see her booty cheeks in this scene, and I was like, oh, so hot. Want to touch the hiney? Although she's probably old enough to be my mother or grandmother, mother, mother, whatever. At least now. Here, I don't know. But anyway, that she's all horny for Crawford. And then Bubba walks in and she looks at him like, ooh. Like, like you could 
see, but I look on her face. She, she saw him. He goes, what the hell's going on? He turns. She turns around, and the look on her face said, ooh, black cock. That is exactly what that face said. Ooh, a big black one. That's exactly what she said, but he doesn't give in to it. And then this is when Pretorius turns the machine on from beyond, which is stupid. And uh, so they they all go back up there because they have to. There's just weird bee things attacking them. But then they all attack Bubba. Bubba dies. Uh, and then uh, they finally get out of the house. They go back to the hospital because, I don't know. And they she is telling the same thing. She's saying the exact same thing that he was saying. Yet the doctor says, oh, we got to lock her up because she's saying the exact same thing that he was saying. She's nuts. Um, I don't like Bailey, but ding dong, hello. She is saying the exact same things that he, the Crawford, was saying. Don't you think, don't you think that just maybe, just maybe, that adds some levity to it? I mean, come on. He was going on about the same stuff. She's going on about the same stuff that he was going on. They called him nuts because no one would corroborate it. Now, she's saying the exact same stuff. She's corrobor corroborating what he is saying. She's confirming that what he said is true. But this bitch, he said, nope, she's crazy, just like him. I think you need to be locked away, bitch, because she's basically confirming what he's saying is true. But no, because we got to stall a little bit. So... Yes, she gets fucked up and get ready for shock treatment. Meanwhile, Crawford starts eating brains. And he doesn't do this, you know, cut open the head. No, he pops an eyeball out and sucks on the eye socket till the brain comes out. It's fantastic. And I, I, I love the doctor's <laughs> reaction to this. When he's sitting there chewing on her brain, she's like, no, you shouldn't eat that. That's, that, that's not good for you. I'm just like, but he's eating a brain. And he does, like, so they end up both escaping. But here's where, like, a continuity error happens. They both leave in hospital gowns. That when they show up, she's got on, like, a jacket and a red turtleneck and stuff. And he's wearing the guard outfit. Now, you could say that the guard's jacket was in, like, the van that he took. But when did she change her clothes? She's got a bomb, too. So maybe there's a scene that was taken out. Because it's like, it's very confusing. She's got a bomb. She's going to set it to explode. Uh, Arbogast supposedly killed Arbogast. No, that's Tilling Gast. Pretorius seemingly kills Crawford by biting his head off. But then Crawford kind of is fusing with Pretorius and, like, saves her. Just in time for the bomb to go off, she jumps out the window. And then she basically gone psycho, which means that... Well, this whole plot with her trying to prove that, it, that what's going on is true or whatever didn't really go anywhere because now she's going to be locked up in the psych ward. Although, uh, you know, Crawford alone was proof that something was going on there. He had a thing popping out of his head. Something happened. But no, they're going to look away. Now, I just explained the entire plot to you. But I need to praise some more stuff. The acting from Jeffrey Combs, Ken Forey, and Barbara Crampton is fantastic. Even the guy who played uh, um, Pretorius was great as the villain. The gore effects in this, 99.9% .9 of the time, are fantastic. Fantastic gore effects. Just, ugh, it's John Carl Bigler, for God's sake. It's absolutely fantastic. The only one that I'm a little sketchy on is when Bubba is attacked by those uh, bead things. You can tell that his arms are beefed up, and then the after effects where they see like his dead body and everything, you can tell that it's just the body, dead body carcass thing laying there with his head sticking out of the ground or whatever, or the floor. And so, you know, shoddy. And also, like, the eel effects swimming around. It's a... It's not a very good composite, but it's 1988, so what are you going to do? The rest of the effects are all fantastic. The score, pretty good. 
I know that it's a wacky premise, but I absolutely love this film. I can't say it enough. I think Stuart Gordon has be- is becoming... I know he's no longer with us, but he's becoming one of my favorite directors to, to watch. Because between this, Dreams in a Witch House, Meshes of Horror, uh, and Reanimator, I really enjoyed his work. Even his associate, Brian Yuzna, has put out some good shit. Like, Society... Two reanimator sequels. Um, uh, even those, uh, the, the Sudden Night Dead Night 4, as weird as that movie was, and I didn't give it high praise in my ranking really, but the effects in that were fantastic. As well as, like, even in the next one, I think he was going to produce it, but, like, body horror, I. Who knew? It was my thing. This movie was fantastic. As I said before, this movie goes to the moon, baby. Because this movie is a perfect score for me. 10 out of 10. It is fantastic, and I found it. I do have one more movie left, which I've already picked. Uh, you'll be getting that later today because I'm recording this on Monday. But I'm releasing this on Tuesday. So, you know. And if I have time, like, I don't know. Um, I'm playing a couple reviews on Wednesday. Horror reviews. Kind of part of a series that I started like last October, I think it was. Last October or the day October before that, like my first October, I think, I did the first one of these. And it's time to do the sequels. Two, three, and somehow, not four, but return to. There's a hint. Uh. But, uh, yeah, I reckon if you are a hardcore horror fan and you love good effects, like great gore, which is also in this movie, you're not, you're not, you're not, uh, you're not turned away by gross out stuff. I ate my dinner while watching this. It all was a little bit nauseating because I was eating pizza. So the gooey cheese, the goo on there kind of didn't mix too much, but. I was still able to enjoy my food and the film. So, if you like all that stuff, you can stomach this stuff, then I do recommend it. Uh, but, uh, until then, uh, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching. I've been Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.